Hello and welcome to Fresh Perspectives. My name is Gail and I'm really happy today because um, my guests are two people who usually come on Fresh Perspectives to do vegan food demos, but I haven't been able to have them on in a couple of years. Uh, a big part of it being the uh, pandemic, but they're here today and I'm really I'm really happy about that. Their names are um, Joanne Stryowski down there at the end of the table in the brown mm -hmm. sweater and her daughter Mary Stryowski. Um, and I wanted to mention to you, I guess I've got to look this way, I mm -hmm. want to mention to you that um, Ann Watkins, who normally was the coordinator that put on the vegetarian, Chautauqua County Vegetarian Vegan Society dinners, has moved to the Buffalo area and will not be putting them on with me anymore. But um, Mary and Joanne have graciously <laughs> agreed to be co-coordinators for the Chautauqua County Vegetarian <laughs> Vegan Society. So I wanted to be sure to mention that. And um, you know, when I mentioned, uh, I told Ann Dinsha when I talked to her on the phone one day um, last fall that uh, Ann Watkins had moved to Buffalo and that you were going to be taking over and uh, she said something very complimentary about the mm -hmm. two of you. Uh, she said, yes, they're good energy. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, Consider who, consider who the compliment was coming from. That is, mm -hmm. that is a great honor. It means she has a lot of respect for you. And that's that's nice. a very special person to be getting a compliment from. <laughs> now, another thing I wanted to mention was, uh, well, we've just started having uh, our dinners again for uh, the summer of um, 2022. Uh, we had one at the end of April. And we're going to be having them through the summer months, June through September. We will be having them, for any of you who are interested, we will be having them starting in June, the first Tuesday of every month through September. Then we will decide, you know, whether or not we'll go back to doing Sunday afternoons because uh, so that people don't have to be driving home from the dinners after dark on a weekday mm -hmm. evening. So anyway, but anyway, at the November dinner that we had back in November, I happened to notice that Mary was looking very slender. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, uh, she has uh, an autoimmune disease, and if she gets exposed to things that, um, I'll let you tell them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Know, if you get exposed to something you're allergic to. Right, yeah, we have um, mast cell activation syndrome. So when we you know, are exposed to our allergens, like eat them or breathe them in, uh, it, it's very hard to lose weight and the pounds pack on quickly. I can you know, go up five, 10 pounds in a week just by somebody wearing a lot of perfume. Just by <laughs> being crazy. near somebody that's wearing perfume, yeah. yeah. Well, wearing masks for two years has been really nice for us. <laughs> <laughs> It kind of bothers my sinuses, though. You oh. know? If like if when I work all day on election day, you know, from five mm -hmm. in the morning till nine thirty or ten at night, and I have the mask on all those hours, it's kind mm -hmm. of like then I wind up having sinus uh, problems for the rest oh. of the week. But uh, but anyway, so anyway, I happened to notice. Um, that Mary was looking very slender, and I'm going, wow, Mary, <laughs> you, uh, I, I said, you have a really good figure, you know, so uh, uh, you want to tell them uh, what you told me? Do you remember what you said to me? Oh, I don't remember what I said. Um, I did start, um, we had read uh, Dr. Michael Greger's latest book, well, it's not his latest book now, but his, one of his more recent books was How Not to Diet, and he goes through all the different studies of different diets and a lot of like the psychology of dieting mm -hmm. and how to form different habits. And so he had said one thing in there was to exercise before breakfast every morning. He said it takes 60 days to really form a habit. So I was like, well, I can do 60 days. I'll just walk before breakfast. And we've been doing it now 
over two years, every morning we get up and walk before breakfast. Mm -hmm. So you and your mom live in the same neighborhood then? No, no, I call her on the phone. I say, I'm going walking now. Oh, the, <laughs> oh, the two of you just go walking at the same time Same time every day. over the phone. Well, we each walk about a mile and meet each other, and we then we walk other. another mile or a mile and a half together, and then we walk a mile back to our houses. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I've, um, uh, the best time, I've always uh, been a practitioner of yoga, and mm -hmm. You're supposed to do that on an empty stomach. So mm -hmm. for many years, I have practiced yoga before breakfast, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I was sort of trained to do the lemon juice diluted with water thing and then, and then practice yoga and then have breakfast, mm -hmm. you know. So um, that gives the lemon juice with water a chance to work its magic, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, well, even just drinking water first thing in the morning is really good. I, yeah. I drink a big glass of water first thing when I wake up. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's what I do. I have, well, after I feed the cats. <laughs> because you know how cat, well, I don't know. You said you'd never had any cats, but. Well, puppies uh, are similar. <laughs> yeah. But you know how it is. Pets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, they want to be your, their, uh, your priority. <laughs> right. They, they want to be taken mm -hmm. care of before you take care of yourself. Yeah. But um, after that, I have my water, yeah. so. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so Mary and Joanne are here and they are going to do a vegan food demonstration that is uh, uh, picnic food, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they have their picnic satchels. Yep. Yes. With them. <laughs> we are big fans of picnics. We go on, I don't know, hundreds of picnics every year, would you say? <laughs> we keep a database. Uh, we start a new one every year, and every time we go on a picnic, we, we add a little bit to our database. So we went this place, we, we, we were at Presque Isle, we ate this for lunch, and it was fun because we saw birds. You know, we keep a little record of what we mm -hmm. do. But we do a lot of picnics. It's Joanne's area of ex expertise. <laughs> and. I'm good at eating picnics, so. And with the pandemic, it was a lifesaver because we were you know, home all the time, but we found we could go to, especially the state parks that were around us that we hadn't spent much time at. Mm -hmm. We were spending a lot of time at state parks, which were, were safe to be at, and mm -hmm. they were close to home, and we had some wonderful picnics. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, uh, I really wasn't too bothered um, with the pandemic, you know, I, I mean, Carl and I aren't really big social butterflies anyway, so. Um, and we live out in the woods, you know, it's beautiful. The neighborhood that we live in is, mm -hmm. is really, really gorgeous. So um, I, wasn't really, I wasn't really too bothered by it uh, myself. Mm -hmm. So, well, do you want to open your picnic bag? Want me to go first? Yeah. Okay. So this is Joanne's picnic bag. It's <laughs> kind of like a Mary Poppins bag. She has everything out. out. Yeah, I know. It, it's isn't like that kind of on the thing. order of what they used to call a carpet, carpet bag? bag. Yeah. yeah. We found it. Um, I'm a big clearance rack shopper, and they saw it marked down at Wegmans, and it's. it's oh, a you got that at Wegmans? Yeah, it's a thermal bag, and I oh think it was gosh. like on sale for fifteen dollars, which seemed like a lot. What but was we it got so much from? use. Hmm? I don't was, remember. It was at least half price. But we keep this like packed all summer long, like just ready to go. We just um, add our, our food to it, but everything that we need for a picnic is in here. So let's see. Um, Normally, first thing we pull out the tablecloth, you've already yeah, got a really I, nice tablecloth here. Usually I put it right at the top. It's a little worn out, but at the top of the bag is always the tablecloth, and we put our tablecloth on the a picnic table anywhere. Doesn't matter how messed up a picnic table is, you know. Um, if you've got a nice pic um, tablecloth with you, mm -hmm. um, you're all ready to go. Mm -hmm. So yeah. everything we need is in here. We don't have to worry. We just throw the food in. So we always keep, um, I keep some paper towels and a dish towel just for in case. There's a lot of just in case things. Right. You know, one uh -huh. time uh, when we went on a picnic in Titusville, well, we had gone to something special uh, down at the Oil Museum in Titusville, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And um, that was when hand sanitizer was kind of a new <laughs> thing. And after we had done what we were gonna do there, we went and found a picnic table. 
And we sat down and we're eating and all of a sudden I realized that the other couple that Carol and I had gone with, the husband, was acting like something was wrong. And I'm, I'm going, what's, what's wrong? And it sh apparently what had happened was a mosquito had landed on one of his oh. hands and um, he didn't want it to bite him so of course he smashed it. And when he, when he did that, the blood of another person or animal or something got all over his hand because the, uh, the mosquito had gotten uh, somebody else first. Mm -hmm. And so he didn't know what to do. So, um, so anyway, uh, we had some hand sanitizer with us. So what we had him do was, he was pretty freaked out about it. We had him um, blot the blood off with a napkin first and then, um, and, and then uh, clean it with some, you know, disinfect it with some hand mm -hmm. sanitizer. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he wound up being pretty glad that uh, we Yeah, had that's that why there's hand sanitizer in here. <laughs> All right. It's our little bit of hand you sanitizer. Do yeah. Uh -huh. We started, with the pandemic, we started using it. And this is a special hand sanitizer that you got from down south somewhere, though, mm -hmm. um, a distillery, because it's not made with corn. Oh, uh, right, because, because of the, allergies, the, so. the corn allergy. Yes, yeah. we keep that with us. Well, you know, I have some hand sanitizer at home. Uh, it's made, it ha it's uh, colloidal silver mm. uh, hand sanitizer. It has colloidal silver in it, and it, uh, you know, that kills just about any disease germs, <laughs> you know. <laughs> silver does, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this will probably be, you know, I, I think a lifestyle change since the pandemic is we'll probably always we'll carry probably always be keeping hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer with us. Sanitizer. Yeah. So we always um, have some water bottles that we refresh before we go. Mm -hmm. So we bring water with us. We oh, yeah, have, I'm always um, bringing water. Yeah. Uh, we have really good water in our well at home. So oh, I, mm -hmm. I always fill up a water bottle when I go somewhere with water from our well. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, we always keep a, a bag with um, utensils and like these are like some old plastic plates that we can take home and wash. Right. Um, Instead of uh, throwing away like yeah, paper without going. Plates. Sometimes yeah. we bring paper, but generally we try to avoid it. We try to avoid. You things know what? Um, I was reading some articles that was in the newspaper um, about um, about the. Um, the, uh, oh, I know what it was. No, it wasn't that. It was uh, something I heard on the radio, actually, where somebody had uh, spent, had paid like $200,000 for a paper plate because some famous person had eaten a piece of pizza <laughs> off. But I, I, I don't recall who the famous person was, but it sounded pretty ridiculous. You know, it's just because somebody's famous doesn't make a paper plate. They ate a piece yeah. of pizza well, off. Well, once I saw Robert Redford eat salad off a paper plate, and he was about as far away as you and I. Uh -huh. And uh, that's a memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I used to, you know, I seem to attract movie stars to myself. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever I used to go to this certain re yoga retreat in the Catskill Mountains, there, there were always movie stars there <laughs> at the same time I was, you, you know, because they're really into that stuff. And, and then the summer that my mother died, um, there was a movie star that did something nice for me when he heard, when he came into the craft market where I was and, um, and heard uh, somebody expressing their condolences oh. to me, uh, you know, because my mother had just passed away about a month earlier. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wound up giving me a poem that somebody had sent him when his mother died that oh. helped him a lot. So, um, so I, I seem to be kind of a magnet. <laughs> <laughs> For them, anyways. Yeah. But uh, you, you got. Did you get to talk to Robert Redford? No, it was. Um, it was like in New York City. Oh, down okay. in, um, um, like what was it? What's the national park there? Right at the uh -huh. tip of the Battery Park. Battery Park, yeah. Battery. Park. And it was his wife. It was like 
It was in the 70s. So oh, it was in the <laughs> it 70s. It was like Sunday, and it was organized by his wife, and there were all these famous folk singers there, and then it poured that day. Oh. And we're like, we're going anyway. So we were up close to uh, like Pete Seeger and Odetta and um, Robert Redford, of course, there with his wife, and there were all these celebrities, and we were like like a dozen of us in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was our up close time uh, with who, celebrities. Who was he married to? Oh, I don't even remember. Isn't that terrible? Huh. She organized this big Sunday in New York City, mm -hmm. and then it poured on it. But we got to well, see Robert Redford what, up close. So anyway, you take cloth napkins. Yeah, we take cloth napkins, and usually it's Usually on our impromptu picnics, it's, um, it's Mary and my husband and I. So I usually take three different kinds of napkins because then if we're going to do like picnics all weekend or whatever, we just fold them up and put them back in. But everybody remembers what kind Which they have. Which one was so there? So Mary's always the gingham. Yes. <laughs> oh, always the gingham. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm usually the red. Arnie's usually the blue. We just know. Yeah. So, but we just keep them in the, in the um, picnic thing. We keep... Um, old silverware, you know, from old sets. Mm -hmm. We always keep um, we always keep a, a nice serrated knife because mm -hmm. in the fall, where if we see an apple tree or something, we want to pick an apple and try it and see if it's good. So mm -hmm. we always have a knife to cut an apple mm -hmm. with for foraging. We keep a, um, uh, like a corkscrew oh, jar open. You got one of those in yours too. You want to tell them later what that's for? No, you can. Um, we, we can things like pears and things in the fall. Uh -huh. So if we're in a hurry for a picnic, we'll grab a, uh, a jar of canned pears, mm -hmm. and like we usually can in a light syrup. Mm -hmm. So then for dessert at the picnic, we'll pop it open and we'll share the pears between us. And then we take that syrup and we bring a can of sparkling water. And mm -hmm. mix it with that. Yeah, we make mm. pear soda. Pear so that's soda. our special treat. There is nothing the nicer than sitting in a state park and watching the birds and the butterflies and drinking a pear soda. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. So uh, I have some extra bags in that I keep in here. We put the dirty things into, mm -hmm. and then we wash them. We put them back in the bag, back in the picnic bag. Mm -hmm. So when we're ready to go, uh, we just pull it out again. We also keep in, well, here's crackers. That's for you for later. Oh, yeah, right? we'll need crackers. <laughs> We We're always eat keep, crackers, um, yeah, I've brought some stuff to you. <laughs> things that end up in the bottom of the bag, we just leave in. Like, uh, we go to a state park and we get the map. This is Long Point's map. Oh, oh, we I just see. keep it in the bag. Just keep it yeah. in there. We keep there. things like, um, there was, it was a field guide to the trees, things like that, little ones. But I lots for you know, little pocket-sized ones that we can just keep in the bag. And we always keep this, a deck of cards and a pen and a little notebook, no matter where we go, we can play cards. And then, <laughs> when we play cards, we put, our, we put the date we play, and we keep our score, and we note who's the winner, and we always write down what we ate or where we went. Hmm. So This says distracted it's, it's kind game. Of, it's kind of Oh, like that's when the RV got stuck, and we were watching the oh, RV get we, stuck. <laughs> yeah, we, closed, we finished the game early because an RV got stuck in front of our cabin. Oh, oh, yeah. I see. Lake Erie, day th Lake Erie State Park, day three swimming. So it's like a little diary of all of our uh, summer yeah, adventures. Yeah, yeah, that's what I can see that. You know, I, you know, I do journal writing. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I write things down in journal, but it's not so much about... Um, remembering things that have happened as writing down um, how I want things to turn out, uh -huh. uh, you know, because um, I read somewhere uh, in a book called Write It Down, Make It Happen. If you write something down in a very positive way, like it's, you're writing that it's actually going to happen, there's uh, something called the reticular activation, uh, something or the other at the base of the brain on mm. the back of the head. And for some reason, if you write down your wishes, uh, that organ will go to work without you really having to think about it or anything to cause you to behave in a way to make uh, what you want to have happen a reality. Mm. So it, it's kind of a metaphysical kind of thing, but it, it's something that can actually happen, yeah. Write cool. down that I'm gonna win the next game. 
<laughs> well, maybe I'll write down that hour in the next day. <laughs> we have quite a competition going, but we always have cards with us. Well, you know, speaking of competition, you know what Carol has been doing the last couple of years? Well, he claims we're having a competition with each other, but <laughs> he counts how much mail each of us gets every day, <laughs> and whoever gets the most is the winner. Of course, that doesn't have to, anything to do with, you know, doing anything to try to win, you know. It's just, well, I'm the winner today, or you're the winner today, or something like that. A competition is fun. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. it keeps life lively. Yeah. 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 yeah, so we always write down, what, if we had a special treat, if we saw a special bird or an animal or things like that. What we found foraging, if we found blackberries someplace, things like that. It's all in our, our little notebook. What else we got in here? Um, it's now just been added because we got a puppy. Got the, just, um, the little bowl for the puppy for his water. Oh yeah. <laughs> so that's gonna stay in there now. Got that at the dollar store. It was a good find. For a dollar? Yeah, for a dollar, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, Mary's probably got some of these in her jar, but oh, I, um, I, dried fruit is something that we carry with oh, us a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Carol. if we keep it right in the bag, <laughs> there you go. Carol if we keep dried, it right in the bag, we don't have to worry about packing it for each picnic. Yeah, Carol dried a whole bunch of uh, apples back in, in yeah. the fall. Uh. Yeah, these are apples, believe it or not, from 2020. Yeah, they're really? Still, if you want to try them, they're still really yeah. good. Wow. Very yeah. flavorful. <laughs> Just doing the little silica pack. I save the, the little silica packs that come with my vitamin D, and I oh. drop them in there with my dried fruit. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if it makes a difference, but I feel like it does. <laughs> Put it in a little can cozy leave that there. out in case. The yeah, Carol puts the dried fruit in the freezer. Oh. And then we just get out what we want. Yeah, these what we fresh want. for years. I would, but like my that. freezer's too full of frozen fruit. <laughs> I've got oh, my... Oh, you, you only have the one in the top of your fridge? No, I have I have a separate freezer in my garage, but oh, it's all do? filled with apples we foraged or berries we picked, cherries we picked, every, all the fruit from all the summer. Mm -hmm. But this is my, my pear leather. I've usually got a bag pear of that leather. with us, too. Mm. So that's easy enough to do, too. When we can the pears, um, you know, and the pieces that are too small, I just throw all the little pieces in a blender, and then when we're done with, for the day, I blend it up, I spread it on my dehydrator sheets, and when we cut it into squares, and it tastes just like a fruit roll up. Mm. So good. It's handy to have, you know, you always need something extra, a little sweet treat when you're yeah, hiking when or whatever. Yeah, long car rides, very good for car rides. I really mm. love pears. You know, when they're fresh, they're so juicy. Mm -hmm. Right. So then we just zip our bag up when we get home, we, we wash out the utensils and the plates and we put them back in the bag mm -hmm. and then we're ready, to, we're ready to go again on our next picnic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Joanne's bag, so we put usually the cold food goes in there with all of our supplies mm -hmm. and then we'll put the hot food in my bag, mm -hmm. uh, but right now this is, is full of cold food. Is that the one food. that you always use? This is, I use this, this is my lunch bag for work and usually our hot bag too. I just <laughs> got a, a new one for Christmas, which is a little bigger, but I, I should have got that one out. But oh, that's insulated yeah. too. Insulated it? too, yeah. So today it's got all our cold things. And you've had that about six, seven years, that bag. Yeah, yeah oh, where, did a long you, time. where did you get it? It's, it's very nice. I think nice. that was Big Lots. Big Lots, I, I think. think. Big but it's, it's been a long time, but I use it every single day, and it doesn't really show a lot of wear. No. But let's see what we've got for our investment. picnic. Oh, got some pudding. Some pudding. So <laughs> this is, mm. we're going to do a little food demo. We've got some pudding. So this is a chia pudding, and I don't know if camera is able to see. It, I don't know, but it's a nice, uh, this one is a carob peanut butter flavored pudding. Mm -hmm. And chia pudding is one of our favorite things to eat in the summer because it's, it's so a good. nice cool treat and it's, it's very fast and easy to make. So I brought another cup here. And chia is really high in those omega Threes? Omega threes, yeah. yeah, yeah, the good healthy fats. So I've got, uh, in here I've got two tablespoons of chia seeds. And I just, they're just regular chia seeds from Wegmans. I throw two tablespoons in there. And then I've got some sweetened plant milk. So you can use any plant milk. So if you are, um, a lot of people like, like the vanilla almond milk, which 
I'm allergic to almonds, so I can't. So I made my own sweetened hemp. Oh, milk. you're allergic to almonds? Yeah. Oh, geez, I feel so bad for That's you. That's right. I eat like a dozen almonds every morning. <laughs> Let me find my. You With breakfast. Find my spoon in there. Somewhere in there is a okay, spoon. Okay, so you mix the plant milk with. Um, you need a spoon. There it is. Okay. With yeah. the uh, with the chia seeds. Yes, and this so this is just uh, some plain hemp milk I made with I sweetened it with dates instead of sugar, mm -hmm. and uh, I put some vanilla powder in there, some ground vanilla beans, mm -hmm. and so I usually do one tablespoon chia to a quarter cup of the sweetened milk. So this I've got two tablespoons, so I'll add half a cup, and I don't have to measure because the bowl has the measuring markings on it. <laughs> so okay. you just fill in. Um, and, and then, then you stir, it, stir it, up. it up. It's not stirring super easy because we're on TV, but at home it stirs super easy. And then I let it sit for just a few <laughs> minutes. It's funny, isn't yeah. it, how things go better <laughs> at home than we yeah. in private than they do in front of an audience. <laughs> yeah, so we'll let that sit just a few minutes and then I'll stir it again. And then I put it in the fridge for it to let it chill. And then it comes out just as this nice pudding cup. Mm. And then we'll take these out of the fridge. Um, and when we pick it, we can throw some fresh berries on there. Um, sometimes I throw some carob chips or some uh, chocolate chips and mint leaves. Chopped peanuts. Sometimes. Chopped peanuts. And it's a really nice, fast snack. Now, mm -hmm. do you use any kind of like a s liquid sweetener or anything uh, in this? Or is it um. just the chia seeds and the plant-based milk. Yeah, you can put anything in there you want. So when I, because I make my own milk, when I'm blending it up, I just throw a few dates in there and mm -hmm. blend the dates. Oh, the dates. So That's, these have dates okay, in them. Okay, so the dates. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know uh, among health-minded people, dates have gotten very popular uh, to mm -hmm. use in place of sugar. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I use a lot of dates. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I've made the chia pudding with the, um, like the, the chocolate almond milk. Mm -hmm. Like you can't have it, but like her to make for her brother, or actually, actually my other daughter comes home to visit. She always wants me to buy her that chocolate almond milk, and then she doesn't drink it all. Mm -hmm. So we mix chia into it. Mm -hmm. It makes a makes a nice chocolate pudding really easy then, because you mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. that's ready to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then, um, yeah. So then I'll just stir this again, um, and then that's it. And you just put it in the fridge, let it chill for like half an hour, and you have a ready to go dessert. It takes literally just minutes to make. <laughs> So, so you can wake up and say, yeah. let's go on a picnic for lunch and make your dessert and it's ready by the time we leave the house. Yeah. It's very refreshing when it's mm -hmm. nice and warm out. All right, we'll, we'll let that sit there and set. It'll get colder. Um, and should I keep digging in here? Yeah. So Are you a there. able uh -huh. to eat maple syrup? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you, some maple syrups, yeah. Some maple syrups? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, which I do, but I try not to <laughs> use too much of it. But Put that oh, back yeah. in my little cozy. Well, any sweetener is going to put the calories on, isn't it? Even yeah. the even the best one, e <laughs> the healthiest ones. Yeah. The, the nice thing about dates is that you've got the sugar is still connected to the fiber, right, so it processes right, different. Right. Maple, you've you know removed the fiber again. Right, but right. Yeah, Dr. So. Greger says the only way maple would be a whole food if you chewed on the branch. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. But, That's right. Yeah. yeah, I hadn't thought of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And and it's uh, basically it's cooked for a really long time too. Mm -hmm. so. But it's delicious. It oh, is. It's delicious. Oh, oh it yeah. sure is. It's yeah. good to eat local. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, not everything we packed in here is super healthy. So um, we've got some. This is a. Um, let's see, a salad. Um, Picnic classic, that's what I'm trying to say, a picnic, picnic classic. classic. So we've got some not egg salad here. So Not uh, egg salad? Not egg salad. Not so, egg salad, um, okay. So we took some chickpeas and mashed them up mm -hmm. um, with some, some vegan mayonnaise. So mine happened to be homemade, but you can use any vegan mayonnaise from the store, mm -hmm. and some mustard. And then I added some uh, black salt. It gives things an eggy taste. And mixed it all up. I threw in some olives. And we've got chickpea salad, which I think, I think it tastes a lot like egg salad. Yeah, I think so too. So we've got that with some crackers. So when we want a picnic, Ooh. we can want to yeah. pass the crackers. Yeah, these are a nice cracker. Mary has to keep mm. gluten-free too. So we're always looking for a good gluten-free cracker that is also corn-free. And these are um, 
The ingredients are buckwheat and sugar and salt. That's it. Mm. Yeah. Do you want to grab a fork out of the picnic bag? I'm sure. Should have brought more forks. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks. Buckwheat is not a grain and. Would you, one of you like to explain to the viewing audience what it is, since it's not a grain? Yeah, so it's just a, a seed, really, uh, but you can cook it like a grain. I, I usually make, when I eat this egg salad, I usually uh, do a bread that I make with um, soaked buckwheat that I grind up and make. Um, yeah, just a seed. So people who have grain issues can still can enjoy eat it. buckwheat. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, not at all related to wheat. <laughs> so if anyone's well, wheat allergic, you it can still kinda, have it. Buckwheat kind of makes baked goods really dark. Mm -hmm. So I, when I use it to bake, I like to make it in something that's going to be a dark color anyway, like brownies. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when I bake my bread, I, I always add molasses for some extra flavor, so it's dark anyway with the mm -hmm. molasses. Yeah, I've seen it. Um, well, I've gotten at Wegmans. They have a cream of buckwheat cereal, similar to cream of wheat. Mm -hmm. And it's very good, but I've used that as a filler in our um, like holiday roasts. If we make like a lighter colored one, because that it's actually must have the brand taken off because it's very almost white in color, and it's a nice grain to put into a like a you know like a burger mix. Mm -hmm. But we make a nice holiday mm -hmm. roast out of it. Buckwheat. Yeah. Nobody knows we're eating buckwheat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I see olives in there. Yeah, so I throw some olives in to make it really really tastes special. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. and those I are like olives. I remember one time George Eisman said he'd rather see people eat whole olives than to use olive oil because, mm -hmm. because at least the olives, even though he said even though there's salt involved mm -hmm. in the olives, it's at least a whole food, which mm -hmm. the olive oil, even if it's extra virgin olive oil, isn't. So um, over the years mm -hmm. from having been exposed to, you know, famous er people that mm -hmm. um, know a lot about this, uh, or at least reading what they've written or whatever, um, I've gotten to where I don't care, really care much about oil, you know, you using oils in, in cooking, so. Yeah, we don't really use any oil for cooking. So when I, I make my mayonnaise for this, I make it using tahini, which is sesame butter, oh, so that yeah. it's, um, don't need any oil for that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as long as we're eating some not super healthy things, should we get out a sweet treat? Sure. What do you right. got? <laughs> so we have some, let's. Let's slide some okay. things aside, mm -hmm. make some space here. We're going to make some color changing where in lemonade. Where the store do you find these? Did you say Wegmans? Uh, Wegmans, yeah, in their gluten free cracker section. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's put some, we'll move some pudding aside. We'll, I should cover this up and later we can snack on some pudding. All right. All right, so this is my. So this is my um, butterfly pea syrup. Mm -hmm. So I brought because <laughs> not butter, it's, it's butterfly P E A. P -E -A. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not something that comes from butterflies. <laughs> um, we are vegans. We don't drink <laughs> any insects, uh, anything. So butterfly P E A. Mm -hmm. So there, uh, there are these blue flowers, dry blue flowers, and um, I just you make them like a tea. Mm -hmm. And so and then I also, I cook it with some sugar to make a simple syrup. So it's a very dark blue syrup here. So let's put this back um, Okay, you make the syrup out of the butterfly yeah, peas. Here. Now that's a yes. type of pea that butterflies like oh. to um, um, land on then? I, I, I think it's just like a, a garden pea, right? But it's just pull out it's just the, the blossoms that yeah, just, yes. the blossoms. Yeah, just the blossoms if you want one. So there. we've used it to make like um, blue frosting as you know, a natural food dye. Natural food dyes, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. um, it's to drink it as like an iced tea is very popular, I think, in some Asian countries. Mm -hmm. um, but here it's really popular to make uh, lemonade with it. So, oh. so I've made my simple syrup here. They're alcoholic cocktails too. We haven't tried oh, that. But we don't do I that. They're, they're common too. So normally I would put some ice in here. I forgot to bring ice today. 
-hmm. But we just will take some of my syrup and pour it in the bottom here. Oh, yeah, that's right. You said you were going to show how to make this certain lemonade. Yes, yeah, so there's our bright blue syrup, and that will stay at the bottom here. And then you can use just regular water, but we like to use uh, sparkling water. So we'll, if I had ice, I would pour it in here and it would, um, it wouldn't like mix too much. It would stay really dark at the bottom. I'll do like just half a jar, maybe a little more. Yeah, the ice would keep that set yeah. down so a little. With, yeah, if we more. had ice, you'd see really a, a layer of blue down here and then the, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but okay. then, so now it's kind of bluish purple, but we'll add some lemon juice to make it lemonade. I'm changing the pH. And now it will turn a nice pink color. For pink lemonade. Yeah. So it's a fun little, especially if you've got kids around, it's a very fun, <laughs> sciencey drink. Now, <laughs> is that lemon juice that you've bought that's already lemon juice, or do you squeeze the lemon juice? Oh, yeah, this is just regular lemon juice. Yeah. Yeah. I just <laughs> wondered, you know, because when I do my lemon juice with water in the morning, I'm taking half of a lemon and. <laughs> using one of those uh, old-fashioned things where you twist it back and forth mm -hmm. to, uh, to juice the lemon. Oh, yeah. Oh. That, it's yeah, nice. If you have fresh lemon juice, it's nice. I'm allergic to the, the waxes they put on lemons, so oh, it's really they put hard for me to... on the lemons? Yeah, so it's very oh. hard for me to find fresh lemons I can drink, so I just I end up with I see you've got a juice. cup in my favorite color there. <laughs> yeah, so we'll divide this up. We can all have some lemonade here. Mm -hmm. I hope those of you at home watching mm -hmm. us are not getting jealous. Well, it's okay, you can have it. You <laughs> worked hard to oh, make God. it. Mary oh, I can and, take out the jar. Yeah, there oh, you go. thank you. Mary and Joe Ahan, I don't know, you know, over, mm. I mean, they haven't been okay. vegan all of their lives, but for somebody who mm -hmm. has just started in recent years, I mean, they have really aced it when it, they are very creative <laughs> cooks. <laughs> <laughs> they, <laughs> They really know how to make things taste good. Yeah. Well, I think I passed one third of my life. So I've been more than one third of my life has been vegan. So we're getting there. Oh, well, good, good. Someday good. I'll hit the halfway mark. OK, let's taste this yeah. uh, lemonade. Mm. It's I'm very not sweet. used to sparkling water. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> We did this at a, a, a STEM ag event with her uh, Girl Scouts, oh, and the girls were not so sure. They were not used to drinking sparkling water either. They were all like, can I just mix it with regular water? It was a Halloween-themed event, mm -hmm. and so we made it, what do we call it, Witch's Brew or something, yeah. and they got, to pour, they got to pour in the different layers and stir it up and watch it turn color, and they had a really good time. Yes, it was really fun. I probably would use just water from my well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my, to make it myself. Yeah, but I think most people do, but can, can I really like get, it sparkling. <laughs> can you get that pea stuff, that butterfly pea? Can you get that at Wegmans? Um, I, I got know. it on Amazon. I don't think oh, I've you ever seen it, it there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mm -hmm. heard about it online for as a food coloring and that it made this lemonade. I think you mentioned it. Mm -hmm. So I surprised you for your birthday last year, I think it was. Right. That. Hmm. It's hard to find things for Mary because she's <laughs> Mary... Um, um, she's very into living sustainably. She doesn't <laughs> like a lot of extra stuff. So mm -hmm. it's hard to get things for you for your birthday because she, if she doesn't need it, she doesn't want it. So I always have to listen <laughs> to see what she's interested in that she won't buy for herself. So I heard her mention that BP, so yeah. butterfly, pea, butterfly <laughs> pea. Mm -hmm. So I, I ordered it for her for her birthday. Mm -hmm. And you've had fun with it. Yes, it's very fun. Well, you know, the, the flowers, the blossoms on the... Um, Pea plants are very beautiful in color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if they're them. edible or not. We like to have a lot of edible flowers in our garden. Mm -hmm. Like um, I know you do the violets this time oh, of year. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, soon yeah. will be the chive flowers, which is my oh. favorite time of year. I loved. I eat as many chive flowers as I can because you snip off that top. If you snip the little end piece, falls into like a hundred little purple blossoms that you can put over your. Right. Potato salad, or your lettuce salad, yeah. or anything you're cooking. Yeah, you can eat rose petals, mm -hmm. but if you're going to eat rose petals, you're going to want ones that are not 
sprayed, sprayed yeah. you know, because you don't want to be eating poison. And then those uh, daylilies that grow alongside the road, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. they're edible. But then, of course, we, the three of us, know that you're not supposed to pick anything that's within yeah. 20 feet of the road or something. Plus, isn't I think it? most people deep fry those in batter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we have, um, we'll pick um, things like what's the little yellow flower that tastes a little lemony? I know what you mean, and the word <laughs> just dropped out of my head as we said it. But a lot of there are a lot yeah. of edible wildflowers out there, and in your garden you can plant like nasturtiums. Right, nasturtiums. They're beautiful, and they're very salad. they're very spicy. The mm -hmm. nasturtiums mm -hmm. are. Yeah, and marigolds. marigolds. Marigolds are edible, are and they, edible. I break them apart and sprinkle the little yellow petals through the flowers. Do you remember as a, as a as a little kid? We had roses in the yard, and you would eat the rose petals. I do remember eating the rose petals. <laughs> yeah. Was yeah. a fun thing to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was our magical lemonade. What do you think? Should we get out some plates and do a little? Sure. Picnic? Sure, they might beat up picnic plates. I didn't put nice yeah. ones in here. So if um, anybody wants some, I hope those of you at home aren't getting too jealous. <laughs> <laughs> That pudding no. is setting up. This is the one you just made? That's the one we just made, yeah. yeah it's really setting up Yeah, if it were in well. the fridge, it would set really fast. Mm -hmm. Let's see, I'm just going to put some things down on the ground here so we have space. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is another thing that's in my picnic bag is my bug spray. <laughs> oh, what is that made out of? Uh, so I use, I do use olive oil for this, so I don't cook with oil, but I still use olive oil. And I've just got some different essential oils in there. Um, mm -hmm. Bourbon geranium oil, lemon eucalyptus. Do you um, have citronella? Citronella. Yeah, a whole different bug blend. <laughs> is is neem, uh, the Indian uh, plant neem, is that supposed to be for, is that, will that repel bugs too? Do you I, know? I think I've heard that. I don't remember specifically what's in this blend. I bought. I buy a pre-made blend, and then I add the lemon eucalyptus, and then I just mix it with my own olive oil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, um, I try not to get sunburned. But if I somehow get stranded out in the sun a little bit too long, and I do get burned, um, I, I will put olive oil on the sunburn twice mm -hmm. a day, and it'll clear up in a couple days without Whoa. peeling. Oh, wow. You never heard that before. No, I, no, I don't. One. I never burn, so I haven't had to <laughs> oh, you, use that. Oh, you're just real careful about not well, burning? I, or, or? I always wear a hat, and usually I keep my shoulders covered. And then other than that, mm -hmm. I don't really tan, but I don't burn either. So it works mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, well, anyway, I, I remember I was reading, I had been reading books about a man named Edgar Casey, who was uh, known as the great, even though he died in the middle of the 20th century, he was still continued to be known as the greatest psychic of the 20th century. And he had said something about olive oil and its great healing powers. Mm -hmm. So after I'd read that, I thought, and I got sunburned maybe a year or so later after having read that, I thought, well, I'll try it on this sunburn. And I did that. I put it on twice a day in the morning and the evening. And, you know, like, uh, after the first day, the next day it was a lot better, and then the day after that it was all cleared up, and it's Good. like, wow, you know, this, this really works. It really does have great healing <laughs> powers. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think that in ancient times, uh, when they didn't have all of these modern antibacterial things and so forth, I had heard that they would use... Um, uh, veg that they would use oils, plant oils, uh, in wounds and things. Well, you get your, um, when you get a mosquito bite when you're out, watch for the plantain leaves. You know what plantain oh, looks yes, like? Oh, yes, yes, And that definitely works. If you pick the leaf and you rub it and you get those oils out mm -hmm. and you rub the plant leaf, plantain leaf on your mosquito It'll bite. It'll stop itching. Yeah, and yeah. the swelling yeah. goes right down. And mm -hmm. if you get, it, it, um, I not only just drink lemon juice mornings, but I always have to have them in the house. I don't try very n hard not to um, run out because um, if you get stung by a stinging insect, um, 
you can hold a piece of lemon on it for a half oh. an hour and it'll suck the venom out. Hmm. Well, I didn't know that one. Yeah, that's a good one to know. Oh, definitely. So now we're going to eat. Yeah, yeah. we can. Yeah. See and, what kind um, of food we've Teresa, got here. are you good at ready? Can I show them other things we bring with us on picnics? Yeah, what else have you yeah. got there? Okay, we keep this bag in the car all the time. All the time, huh? You know, well, being vegan is a, for us anyway. It's not um, completely about what we eat. I guess it's kind of a lifestyle where you oh right like uplift life. You know, you try to be sustainable. You try to be kind to of the earth. You try to. Um, um, be you know creative so we keep this creativity bag uh -huh. <laughs> in the car and when we're out at a park um, we pull it out and we've got like um, these are um, charcoal drawing pencils oh. with the erasers and the little blending tools and things mm -hmm. and we've got um, my favorite watercolor pencils Oh, you color with the yeah, watercolor yeah. pencils, and you just need a little water, and it makes it into a watercolor. We've got, um, I keep a journal, like, I think you gave me this book once, Mary, mm -hmm. for a gift. Where are my pictures? And you draw pictures. Yeah, so we've got, like, here's a picture, I think this was Lakewood Beach. Oh. Right? oh. Yeah, Lakewood Beach, uh, right underneath where I, what I painted. Um, Hold, hold the pictures That's up like, so oh, that okay. Here, the you wanna, you wanna hold, the hold the pictures there? up so that that camera right mm -hmm. there, that one right there will uh, capture the pictures. Trees. I, was this the yeah, tree? Yeah, not very good, but oh, we just says you know you don't yeah. have to be good to paint and you don't have to be good Lake to draw. Beach. No, it's a personal thing and it's just a way of. Um, I try to set a goal to do one creative thing a week anyway. Was this it's your grandma you drew? Oh, yeah. You didn't see her out in nature. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. No. Yeah. Is I think at the beginning oh, a, is this um, a bird. Is the tablecloth. Is, is that, that a, a bird? Is that a junco, maybe? Yeah, I think I did that for National Draw Bird Day. Yeah. There's National a day every year. National Draw Bird Day? I didn't even yeah, know Yeah, we missed was. it this year. Yeah. I didn't draw a bird and so draw a bird day. Fun. Yeah, you showed them these. These are when we went camping last year. We, we had a rainy camping. day. We took some junk mail, brought some junk mail with us. And oh, we made you made those pictures out of junk mail. <laughs> yeah. So we've got a bird there. It says, welcome. And it looks like it's got a map of Chautauqua County. Yeah, because you can mail these. You, I don't know if you know that. You oh, can mail so just about anything. Uh -huh. So we make postcards that you can, that you can, you know, cheer up cards to mail to your friends. Mm -hmm. But just use a little creativity. Have you ever been on that Titusville train ride? It goes down no, near no. Uh, near that. Oil City, and then cut turn, and then they uh, have to move the engine from the one end to the other end while you're mm -hmm. stopped, and uh, <laughs> you go back. That is a really fun train like ride. If you ever. Oh, if you ever think dry you socks. <laughs> dry <laughs> That's socks. a good thing to bring on a picnic. You have some <laughs> yeah. dry socks somewhere. <laughs> but we keep this in the car, and then if we're at a, a picnic table and we're like tired of walking or we're done with our hike or whatever, like let's get out the drawing bag and, and just sit and sketch whatever is around us. Yeah, and mm -hmm. and what do you use to adhere uh, the pieces of junk mail to? Uh, we might have used Mod Podge. You can use regular mm -hmm. white Elmer's glue. Oh, can you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as long as you coat it, brush mm -hmm. it over it. Yeah, and Mary, you always bring that other bag there. Oh, yeah, I've got my, this is, this is my picnic essentials. So I've got my bug spray in here, but inside, this is my camera bag. So, well, first, <laughs> this is not a camera, obviously. This is my, uh, my foraging cup. <laughs> okay. So it's nice, you know, for drinking our pear sodas and things out of it, but also if we're out and we find some nice berry bushes, uh, there are some places we walk where we know all, where all the good berries are, so we can pick some berries and bring them back to have with our picnic. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got my camera to see what kind of wildlife we can see. And this is my monocular, because I can never get binoculars to work right. One eye is always not quite right. So oh, my mom um, yeah. got me a monocular, which I love, but usually she ends I up using it, it because I'm using the camera. And then got some sunglasses, and I think I've got a map of the park here. Oof. But then this is our favorite. 
So this is our bag of miniatures. <laughs> we'll set these guys up here. So sometimes you have to make your own excitement in these parks. <laughs> so we bring our little miniatures. We've got a squirrel. We've got Yogi Bear. We're always looking for new ones at yard sales. A little things, bird. The miniatures. <laughs> it's a, this is our super tiny deer. He's not even going to stand up. There's a little deer there. And so we will go to the, the parks and we make little little scenes with our miniatures and we take, take photos pictures of, of flowers. We'll put, there's a little, I don't know where a little flowers, skunk is. We'll put acorns. the little skunk in front of it, like, like odds and ends of pep, salt and pepper shakers and things. Or we'll put a, um, find a, a, an acorn, we'll put the squirrel next to it and take a picture. We have a whole, we should do a, publish a book of all our yeah. little, we call them vintage mini. Vintage um, mini. Photos, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like the little bulldog. He's nice on a tree root. It looks like he's up on top of a mountain, but he's really on the root of a tree. My favorite is the angry little deer. I'm always yeah. putting the angry little deer. I'll make him like <laughs> glare at a mushroom. I'll make him glare at an acorn. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put him in front of like a little pill bug. <laughs> yeah, because you can like take so many pictures of nature. It's nice to like spice it up a little bit with some fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So, so we keep that in the camera bag. Yes, <laughs> the not edible parts of a picnic. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You. There are things you cannot eat. Yeah. <laughs> and now we've taken to bringing along um, frisbees. Frisbee golf is very popular. Like Lake Geary State Park has an excellent course there. So we're trying to learn how to do frisbee golf. And frisbee we took golf. Frisbee golf, yeah. And we took a nice, um, it, it was a class led by the educators from the state parks. Mm -hmm. um, and it was at Lake Erie State Park, and they have awesome programs. If you check out the park Facebook pages, they, we've won programs on bears last year. We did foxes. Birds of prey, Birds of prey. Uh, mm -hmm. mushrooms, all kinds of things. Mushroom walks. So yeah. usually Long Point and Lake Erie they'll have on Saturdays and Sundays, and then um, Allegheny State Park has things every weekday. Mm -hmm. So and. Um, you know, they're free with your park admission. And they're a great chance to really see more of what's around you. Right, you don't even have to, you don't have to pay, if you're going to go in for a picnic, if you go to one of the classes, you don't have to pay the admission to the park. Really? They say we're going to the class on nature photography, whatever, and they say, okay, go ahead. Really? Yeah. So it's a way to get into the I wasn't even park. aware of that. Mm -hmm. um, they're excellent programs. Yeah, we really enjoy all the, the park programs. We learned all about um, the new uh, name um, sponge moss. Spongy moss. Sponge moss. moss. Yeah. It's About a type of life moss. Cycle. Uh, moth. Yeah. Oh, moth. moth. Yeah, moth. those destructive moths. Oh. And, uh, we were worried about seeing them all over the trees at the park, and we learned that they're they're like on a like a five year or so life cycle, and it has to do with oak trees and acorns, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we learned. When the oak trees have more acorns. It brings about more mice, and then the mice population grows. Is this right? Yeah. And then they're, it's overloaded, so the mice die down, and they don't eat the moth eggs, and then the moths bloom with a oh. big moth population. And that's why we have more of those moths in the trees the last few years. So it should eventually cycle back around, and they'll go away, hopefully. Yeah. Uh -huh. But we didn't know that until we went on one of these nature walks. And they, ha they often have wild edible walks. Yeah, they're fun. Mm -hmm. Of course, our favorites. We love to eat, obviously. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, the, our timer says we've only got a little over uh -oh. four minutes oh. left. So uh, was there something you wanted to make sure to get in there yet? No, just to say, you know, start if you're not a big picnic person. Uh -huh. You know, just start it and jump in and, and keep a bag. If you keep a bag, it's so much easier to go. And when you pack up your leftovers from dinner, pack them into smaller containers. Mm -hmm. that you can just pop them into a picnic bag the next day. Mm -hmm. Lots of pasta dishes become pasta salad the next day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Make picnicking easy for you. And mm -hmm. do it, because it's fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad mm -hmm. they let me have my beverage in a yeah. purple glass. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't even get to, to eat things. Would you like some puddings or anything? Oh, sure. So I already tried the egg salad there. The egg salad. Um, shall I put some of this onto a plate? Sure. So, Would you like a um, plate there? Do you want to do another spoon in there? Yeah. Do I have another spoon? Yeah. Yeah, so that's <laughs> the, the pudding we just made. Even though it has been refrigerated, you can see how much it's set up. Mm -hmm. one right. To eat with. I don't know. Want some pudding? 
Sure, thank you. The pudding that I make with uh, um, avocados. Oh, mm. avocados. Um, yeah, I, um, it, it says to put it in the refrigerator for a certain amount of time, the recipe does, mm -hmm. uh, before you eat it. But it seems ready to eat. Mm -hmm. as soon as you put the ingredients in the blender and blend them up, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well these, they don't take too long, but you can see the one that, um, the one that we refrigerated oh, yeah. is definitely much more firm. <laughs> yeah, I think Carl would probably like, like this a lot. And my favorite thing to put in a picnic bag, which we didn't bring today because it's not healthy. <laughs> I always top it with a bag of potato chips. Oh, Joey. <laughs> and I tell her, don't put those potato <laughs> chips in there. <laughs> I say it's not a picnic without potato <laughs> chips. <laughs> That's one thing that I that I don't buy is mm -hmm. potato chips. It's bad. It's my my downfall. Your your weakness. <laughs> yeah. Mine is chocolate, but at least I'm good about um, getting chocolate that doesn't have any dairy mm. in it anyway. Mm -hmm. So. Good mm. pudding, Mary. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. We're going to end quietly eating. It <laughs> tastes like summer. <laughs> it does. We will probably picnic on our way back to Jamestown today. This yeah, we'll pudding, this pudding <laughs> actually would um, taste good with fresh berries. And mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all it is really is a couple tablespoons of chia seeds and um, some plant-based uh, milk alternative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. So I do uh, one tablespoon to a quarter cup of any plant-based milk. Mm -hmm. That seems, there's all kinds of recipes online, but that's the, the ratio I found that I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. Stopping at a farmer's market is fun on the way to a picnic too. It's a good mm -hmm. way to get fresh produce or salads to take with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Happy yeah. summer to yeah. everybody. We're all eating yeah, instead of happy, talking. Happy yeah. summertime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll pass some of this down here probably. Oh, thank you. Could I have a cracker? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of fun. Uh, for those of you um, who've never been to our vegetarian vegan society dinners, we always have a really nice uh, visit and have a lot of really delicious food to eat. Uh, mm -hmm. If you think, if you think um, a vegan diet could not be delicious, you should <laughs> try coming to one of our dinners sometime. And they don't have to be vegan. A lot of people they, come they are not vegan. They don't have to. There are people mm -hmm. who are not vegan that don't come just because they know they can get a really good meal for a really reasonable price of only. <laughs> of only six dollars so uh, you wouldn't get a good meal like that for only six dollars in a restaurant so mm -hmm. but yeah. anyway i hate to say it because it's always so much fun to have mary and joe mm -hmm. Ann on uh, but we've come to the end of another episode of fresh perspectives um, and i will see those of you in the viewing audience on the next episode mm -hmm.